My name is Nancy Holkamp. I'm a retina specialist. I have been in practice for 23 years. Currently, I'm the director of retina services at the Pepos Vision Institute in St. Louis, Missouri. So when I started seeing Shirley, it was as a second opinion. She was getting infrequent anti-VEGF injections from other retina specialists, and she was dissatisfied with the response. By the time she came to me, she was 2100 in the right eye and 2400 in the left eye and really was having trouble with her day-to-day -day activities. So I decided to start fresh and I gave her the series of three anti-VEGF injections and quite frankly, they didn't work. And so I knew I had to move on to intravitreal corticosteroid injections. And when I found myself giving intravitreal corticosteroid injections, I knew she was an excellent candidate for Alluvian. Well, as I mentioned, Shirley was very dissatisfied with her care, and she could see that her vision was deteriorating, and Shirley could no longer read or drive. In fact, she had a very scary experience driving, which is what ultimately drove her to me. Um, my goal was to improve vision, and I'm happy to say that today, Shirley is 2040 in her right eye and 2050 in her left eye, and legal for daytime driving, and she's really thriving. So I chose Alluvian for this patient because she needed a long-term solution for her persistent DME. And we have that with Alluvian. And I can tell you, before I gave her Alluvian, she was getting nine, 10 injections in the prior three years. And since I gave her Alluvian, she's had one treatment in each eye post-Alluvian, one focal laser to the right eye and one SLT for pressure in the left eye. She's ecstatic and so am I. When I see Shirley every three months, I'm looking at some very key factors. Number one is her vision. It's been stable about 20, 40, 20, 50. And considering where she started, I consider that a win. The second is her OCT, and the OCT has been nice and thin with a central foveal thickness less than 250, really essentially since we gave her Alluvian. And then finally, it's very important that we check her pressure. Shirley happens to be on three glaucoma medications topically and she had one SLT in the left eye. So having an elevated intraocular pressure is not a contraindication to Alluvian, but it has to be managed. And what I find is that her visual field has remained stable and that she's doing quite well. So Shirley has had Alluvian in the right eye for over three years, and in the left eye we're coming up on three years, and she's done very well. So what I really like about Alluvian is the continuous microdosing because we don't have that for any other form of therapy for diabetic macular edema. The anti-VEGF injections are pulsatile, and even the dexamethasone implant is pulsatile. And I think there's a real benefit long-term for this continuous microdosing because Shirley's vision has been very stable over the past three years. So Shirley has really benefited from these Alluvian injections. In fact, she tells me every time I see her at our three-month appointments. She used to have anxiety before coming to see me in the office because she knew she was likely going to get an injection. And now she knows that likelihood is far reduced. And generally, I'm giving her good news about her vision, her OCT, and her pressures. So since receiving a Luvian injection in each eye, Shirley's outcomes have been relatively stabilized. So her OCT has normal thickness without diabetic macular edema. Her intraocular pressures are being managed with topical drops, but they're in the normal range. And her vision has been stable at 2040 to 2050, and she reads and drives, and in fact, she started her own business recently. Prior to Alluvian, Shirley was very worried about going blind, and it took a lot of work on both of our parts to manage her diabetic macular edema. Post Alluvian, she's done very well. Her vision's been stable, her OCT has been stable, her pressures have been managed with eye drops, and it's taken a lot less work on both our parts to manage her DME thanks to the continuous microdosing of Alluvian. One of the things I like about Alluvian is the longevity. With the continuous microdosing over three years, I know that the drug is working even if I'm not monitoring Shirley every day. And she derives the benefit as well because she's had stable vision over the past three years. My name is Shirley Barker. I live in Mexico, Missouri. 
I'm 75 years old. I was diagnosed with diabetes about 30 years ago. When I realized how bad it really was, I almost hit a freight train. Uh, I didn't see the signals, I didn't hear the signals, and I just crossed the tracks the same time the bar come down. And the bar hit the windshield of the car. And I realized right then and there that I could not see. <laughs> this just happened about three years ago, you know, that it steadily has gotten to that point where I was considered legally blind. Up to that point, it was harder to read, you know, read the newspaper, uh, prescription on bottles and things like that. Um, but it was steady, but it seemed like when my sugar was high, uh, it really affected my vision more. So the key was to keep my diabetes under control. Uh, I noticed my vision was getting worse when I couldn't um, read the recipe books or um, read a prescription on a bottle. I could tell that there was a big difference. After the alluvian injection, I started driving again and um, was able to go back to work full time and do my normal work. When I felt like I was losing my sight, I just thought there's still something that can be done. It's just hard to explain when you lose something and you get it back. One of the things I love to do most is work in my flowers. And um, the expression, stop and smell the roses. And that is so true. When you're given time to be with your loved ones and to share special moments. And I feel like that's been given back to me. I guess one of the fears that I had when I thought I was gonna lose my sight was um, not being able to see my grandchildren. Just be with the ones that I love the way that you wanna be. Since Olivia, I'm so glad I don't have to get as many eye injections. I do recommend Alluvian uh, because it's worked for me. It, I can now go shopping with my partner, with Doug. Uh, we enjoy working together in the kitchen. In my home health care, I can help with the prescriptions, uh, read the labels on the bottles, many things that I feel comfortable doing now. I was a little hesitant to do before. I can now see my grandchildren playing on the farm, playing games, uh, doing things with them. I enjoy very much. Indication. Illuvian. Fluocinolone acetonide intravitreal implant, 0.19 milligrams is indicated for the treatment of diabetic macular edema, DME, in patients who have been previously treated with a course of corticosteroids and did not have a clinically significant rise in intraocular pressure. Contraindications. Alluvian is contraindicated in patients with active or suspected ocular or periocular infections, including most viral diseases of the cornea and conjunctiva, including active epithelial herpes simplex keratitis, dendritic keratitis, vaccinia, varicella, mycobacterial infections, and fungal diseases. Alluvian is contraindicated in patients with glaucoma who have cup-to-disc ratios of greater than 0.8. Alluvian is contraindicated in patients with known hypersensitivity to any components of this product. Warnings and precautions. Intravitreal injections, including those with alluvian, have been associated with endophthalmitis, eye inflammation, increased intraocular pressure, and retinal detachments. Patients should be monitored following the intravitreal injection. Use of corticosteroids, including alluvian, may produce posterior subcapsular cataracts, increased intraocular pressure, and glaucoma. Use of corticosteroids may enhance the establishment of secondary ocular infections due to bacteria, fungi, or viruses. Corticosteroids are not recommended to be used in patients with a history of ocular herpes simplex because of the potential for reactivation of the viral infection. Patients in whom the posterior capsule of the lens is absent or has a tear are at risk of implant migration into the anterior chamber. Adverse reactions. 
In controlled studies, the most common adverse reactions reported were cataract development, Illuvian 82%, sham 50%, and intraocular pressure elevation of greater than or equal to 10 millimeters of mercury, Illuvian 34%, sham 10%.